What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the quietest Friday night seminar here at Lake Fork we've ever done. Might not be quiet for very long because uh, look who we brought. Here we go. We are absolutely isolated from everybody else. Uh, the marina's open for business at Oak Ridge. It's kind of important. Deal. Open for business, yes. Take out food to the restaurant. We're actually here in the back of the restaurant, as you can see, nobody here. But the restaurant is open for takeout food. We both are eating here every yeah. for lunch. Yeah. Uh, they do a great job getting food out fast. They have a nice pavilion you can sit under to eat. So Oak Ridge and everywhere else is open for business. Then we're going to set the cameras for free. Yeah, so I mean the lake is wide open for business. Tiffany's, Lake Fork, we would love them. We normally do these seminars over at Lake Fork Marina in the, up, the upper room. But today we are open. We launched from Oak Ridge. We started from Oak Ridge. And since we can't have a, a gathering with everything that's going on in the world, we both launched here. We figured we'll just film this seminar because listen, the coronavirus may be shut down all kinds of things. A couple of things that ain't going to shut down is our desire to fish no. and our desire to help you guys catch more fish. So here we are after a long day on the water, and we're going to sit here and, and get into a seminar topic and try to help you guys catch more bigger fish. But Oak Ridge Marina, if you guys haven't ever been to the South Lake, please come check them out. Probably the best tackle store on the lake. Best selection on the lake. Sure. It's, it's a great tackle store. Really good food, some of the best food on the Definitely lake. Definitely best swimming selection. Best swimming hands selection, down. hands down. Uh, they've got a great, as you saw on that view out the window there, a great place to park your boat, beach your boat. If you're fishing, you want to come grab some eat in the middle of the day or at the end of the day, great place to park your boat. So uh, Oak Ridge Marina, phenomenal facility. We don't get to plug them very much because we're always at Lake Fork Marina, but awesome. And that's awesome. the east side of the fork. East side? East side? East side is the beast side. That's right. So anyways, yeah, I got a camper over here, so I'm over here every day. You got a camper around the Every day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner just about. So. That's right. Man, you know, getting into this time of year, you're, uh, you're awesome doing your thing. thing. Yeah. It's an awesome time of year. I've had an awesome week. We've, we've stroked them. Uh, we had an eight pound fish in my boat every day this week until today, and today we only had a seven four. Backed up with a six and a bunch of fives and a bunch of fours. Like It was an awesome day today. It's been really good. Uh, we, we had one day where the bite was kind of slow and catch a lot of numbers, but we still had an eight pounder. So that's another decent one's behind it. So uh, we've got to that time of year where I like to say it's really consistent. Yeah. And when you get to a time of year when it's really consistent, that usually coincides with the fact that there's different ways to skin the cat. Yeah. You don't Absolutely. have to do it one set way. Yeah, you know, uh, that's going to be something we can talk about tonight because yeah. I'm, I don't really like to stand on top of them and look at them for 30 or 45 minutes until they buy. I just yeah. don't really enjoy it. If it's a big enough one, I'll stand there that long, that's for sure. Oh, you will, you will. If, if it's one that looks at you long, you'll stand there. <laughs> I've matured a little bit. It's been a couple years since we've side fished together. There was one day I, I found you on the lake and it looked like you hadn't shaved or showered in weeks. And I was like, dude, what's going on? You said it's four pound and won't buy. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, you know, definitely, uh, definitely the, it's it's bed fishing time. I love the side fishing deal. I do love side fishing. I think it's a way to be really consistent with putting big fish because you can pass over. Yeah. You know, when you're on fourth, you can, uh, at one point today, we caught some fish and good fish off beds and we caught several three, four, five pounders. And, we just quit looking at anything under four or five pounds. Sure. Anything that we didn't think was for sure over five pounds, we didn't even flinch at it. We could, and ended up paying off because then they would cover enough water. We found a heavy five and a seven pounder to catch right at the very end of the day. So that's my thing about side fishing is I love it because you can be selective about that. You can specifically target bigger fish. Well, sure. me and you're cutting the same jib and we both like to catch the big bass. Sure. Like the big bass is really kind of all we care about. And side fishing to me is just a really good way to do that. Now. There, you can also catch a lot of fish fishing shallow in the spring, but sight fishing the way I do it, looking at each fish, setting up on it, taking your time, plucking that fish off the bed, it's not really a numbers deal. It can be, but it's not generally, you know. Generally it's not. Um, obviously, a lot of you guys probably watched MLF when they were out here, and some of these guys kind of plucked them away. Jeff Sprague was one of them. Um, Justin Atkins was another one that really were able to kind of keep their numbers up, but catch those fish. Now, they, they were fortunate. They were there as they moved up. They I mean, were there when we they, they piled in. Yeah. But you say Justin Atkins kept his numbers, but he caught nine fish that day. The day he caught 12 that first day. No, he caught nine the first day. Okay, I was thinking he caught 12. But I think he caught 12 the second day. But either way, we're talking about 10 right. or 15 fish. Whereas, yes, yes, yes. If you go yes, around doing something yes. else, you might catch 20, 20 30, whatever. 40, 50, yeah. 60. You might for sure. Um, but again, you know, I think they, they were fortunate. Now, Justin did go ahead and pluck the big ones. He kind of passed up with them long. He, he sure did. Big. Justin Atkins, that was, that was awesome. a very impressive display of side fishing. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's, it's about the spawn. It's about pre-spawn, spawn, and post-spawn. Um, you love to side fish? And I, I do like, you know, don't get me wrong, I love to side fish. I, in fact, if me and you went out just fun fishing, I'd love to get over on a bed and, and pluck some 
eight and nine pound drop. Yeah. From the guide standpoint, it's a little bit tricky. It depends on your customers. It I does. don't slide fish every day. I do slide fish most days. Uh, when I have customers that are wanting to do that, customers that, that are able to do that sure. is, is a factor. Sure. To be honest with you, and it, it can be a deal where you have certain customers you just can't slide fish. Right. But you have a lot of people that are coming in to learn to slide fish. It's a, I do have people. It is an absolute. It is a tool you have. To, I believe for a tournament angler, this is a tool you have to have. I think a lot of young tournament anglers start to build their momentum early on in the year because they're young and they have the ability to see a little bit better. And a lot of times they're they're more up to date with trending uh, um, ways of catching fish. Um, you know, to me, the side fishing deal, you, you know, we kind of touched on earlier, you can pass over certain fish. Well, when you're fishing a traditional style tournament where it's best for stringer, if they're on beds, why would you not only, like if you're on a lake that you know it's gonna take a big bag, like you know, like if you come here and you're fishing, if you had no slot here, you come here, you know it's gonna take 30 pounds to compete. Sure. So you just don't even fish for anything under four or five pounds all day, and you don't waste any time ever. So to me, like sight fishing, if you're a tournament fisherman in a traditional, not not a county fish MLF deal, but you're a traditional best five stringer deal, like if they're on beds and you're not sight fishing, you're probably not going to win. Well, I think I think there's some truth to that. I definitely think somebody can get out here with a glide bait and just beat the brakes off everybody. And or then, Carolina rig or if they hit, or, Maybe, but that's a maybe. Yeah. Like it the side fishing deal is you're going to have a big bag. You but, will. Well, I think so. I think it's a maybe as well. You still got to you still got to find execute. the right fish. Yeah, execute. yeah, you know, you get you get that one or two opportunity to set a right down there and you you stick her early and don't get her and you know two or three things go right. I definitely think it's uh, it is in BASS the best five fish ever weighed in a single day. We're caught side fishing, right? That's true. Um, by Dean Rojas and my uh, best five bag ever caught out here for, yeah. for a customer trip was caught side fishing. Yeah. And so I definitely think it's a big deal. Well. One of the best bag, the best bag I ever had in East Texas. Most of them, or three or four of them. Yeah, we had two tens a day. So it's definitely a um, one of the absolute most important things you have to have in your tool belt if you're going to be a professional angler, I believe, or a tournament angler in, in any sense. And um, but again, there's no one way to skin a cat, right? We talk That's about this true. every year because you love to sight fish, and I do again. But man, it's tricky as a guy, and we, we, we kind of talked about that. It's touching it. Um, so, but I like to bed fish. I'm not going to pass the beds up. I just do it a little bit different. That's right. And so I'm going to talk about that a little bit tonight. And you know, going into this, this works out perfect because Mark Daniels uh, just came out here and won the the qualifying group. group had the best day out of the whole. Had the best, had the best single day out of anybody in the event. And so 80, 80 something pounds in one day. And dude just went old school on. Them. I'm talking about like old school. And old school. And these fish were on beds or relating to a bed or. You know, I have a little term that I like to use because we talk about pre-spawn and post-spawn. People ask, how long does it take the fish to get post-spawn? How long does it take the fish to get pre-spawn? Well, they pre-spawn until they get on the bed and they're post-spawn as soon as they get off the bed. But to me, there's kind of a, a difference in, you can have pre-spawn fish that are on this point right over here on the main level. Sure. And you have post-spawn fish on that point right over there. There's a term I like to use called immediate pre-spawn and immediate post-spawn. Like those fish that are right. looking for a bed, right. they're Cruisers. around the bed, yeah. they're just about, like in a few days, yeah. they're going to and those fish that have just got off that bed, they're still hanging in that area, just yeah. kind of recovering and resting. Garden fry. So this technique that you're talking about, not only does it catch the spawn beds, but it catches a lot of the immediate pre and yeah. immediate post spawn fish. Man, it's old school. Look, here's the real. This is old school. This started with cream worms back in the day. Way back. And, uh, you know, he, he caught them on a methylate trick worm, just a uh, straight tail worm. Um, I'm going to get some of those because you can't find one anywhere in East Texas after he does. Uh, dude, I got so many of them. <laughs> and, but here's the deal, you know, uh, methylate's a great worm. It's a great color. Bubble gum, which is pink, is Thank great. Um, this is called uh, Lime Truce. Old school right here. Green. Bright, bright lime. White's a great color. And basically all you're doing is it's no different than throwing a buzz bait or whatever. You're trying to irritate the bass in the body and making a reaction um, out of something they're just not sure about. They don't want to run their bed. They don't want to run their fry. They're swimming around. They're looking for a spot to spawn male or female. And they see something that's just not right. And they'll attack it. And so uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to approach this the same way that MDJ did, which is with a fairy one. Uh, the old upside down pole, spinning pole. Um, and, and I've thrown this technique for a long time. I've done this a long time. I've caught a million fish doing this. I think it's it's probably something we don't see as much anymore. I think some of the old school guides or guys, you know, guides or fishermen in general, oh, this yeah. is this is something that we still see them throwing around the banks. And you know, a lot of people throw this on a bait caster. I, I know you probably would. You'd probably take like a seven foot medium, if I go light medium heavy or something. If I go totally weightless with a trick one, no nail weight, no nothing. I do actually 
the so biggest concern. Yeah. That's and, the one technique I need to pick up. And I don't think, that, here's the deal, I don't think that there's a problem with it. I think, and, and what, what, what you have to understand about a, a spinning rod is it's not, you're not throwing this for any other reason other than presentation. Your goal in throwing this is for casting. That's the only reason you throw a spinning rod. There's no other reason to throw a spinning rod. Unless, you know, the only other reason to throw a spinning rod would be because of drag. Your, 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 your ceramic drags on your high-end spinning reels um, are going to be a lot more stable and a lot better built to actually use drag. You don't really want to use drag on a bait caster as much as you do a spinning rod. And so on light line, 6, 8, 12 pound test, that drag is a lot more forgiving and a lot more calculated for the angler. You don't know what you're going to get out of a bait caster a lot of times on this you do. So, I mean, I've never used a drag on a bait caster. I literally, if, if I need some drag, I just I don't use yourself. Same here. Yeah. Same here. This is my drag. Um, this is my drag. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Remember the one episode of Dynasty where Phil kept going on about uh, trying to get my drag? Yeah. You didn't know something? Mm, they sunk his boat. And they I didn't watched get his, a little they bit. Didn't get his drag, they didn't get a drag hook for his hoop nets, and he's like, where's my drag? Dude, Sadie's, my drag. Sadie's hot. I mean, is that just me? <laughs> no, that's everybody. Okay. Okay. That's that's every red blood Let's talk about trick points. Oh, trick points. Okay. Trick okay. So let's talk about the set. Squirrel. <laughs> I'm going I'm to squirrel for sure. I'm going I'm to talk. We're going to talk. I'm going to talk more about bed fishing than just okay. this, but I'm going to go into detail because this is the hot. This definitely thing. catches the spawn of bats. This is a seven foot light, medium heavy rod. Yeah. Um, it's got a good parabolic bend. I don't want I don't want too little because I need to set the hook and I need to make a little bit of a long cast with this, but I need to be able to bow up on them. But I don't want too much rod. I need a lot of parabolic bend on this slot line. I'm throwing 20 pound fluorocarbon, or excuse me, I'm throwing 20 pound braided line. Uh, this is actually green. I, I normally throw uh, yellow, but I had a spinning reel broke this morning. You don't know about that, but I don't all I have is green. Um, I definitely don't know about spinning reels broke. Yeah, I don't I use near somebody to somebody kicked it and broke it in half. Oh my yeah, goodness. So. Anyways, and then I've got a leader. I've actually got 15 pound line on this leader because I'm fishing behind a bunch of thick gator grass. Right. Now, understand something, guys. When you're downsizing in line, it should only be faced based on visibility. I'm out here at Lake Fork. The water's pretty stained. It's really stained in a lot of areas. 15 pound line with a 20 pound backing or a 30 pound backing is perfect. There's no reason to go 10 pound line. It just doesn't make any sense. 12 pound line, maybe that's fine. But really, if you throw 12 behind these match, you might as well throw 15 when the water's dark. I'm throwing a three aught six cents hook, um, and this is the jugular. This the ju now now. I, I want to talk about this for a second, folks. That's an old. This most is, people call those offset round bend. This is a round bend offset. This is actually a, a white bite, but it's a round bend offset hook. And for me, I see a lot of people using an extra wide gap hook. Now I'm going to explain why you're not going to see your tour level pros almost ever throw an extra wide gap hook. And there's a couple reasons, especially on a bait like this. When you rig this bait, and all you're going to do is Texas rig. I'm not putting a weight on it. I'm not putting anything like that. I want to, I'm going to throw it weightless. I'm going to use the weight of this medium wire hook as my weight. That had a little piece of extra on there. Um, but you're just going to Texas rig this. Uh, but I want to show you something a little bit, and you, you may know this. And, and I don't always do this, but a lot of guys do. What a lot of guys will do is on, on your regular offset round bend hook, you know, you're just going to rig it like this. You want that worm as straight as possible, right? That's what we teach them. There's a lot of old school guys that, that, are you with me? You're zoning out. A lot of old school guys kind of put a little bit of a kink in it. Have you seen this? Mm -hmm. And so I think it's cool that the, the bait has a lot of action. I also think it's one of those things that all the old school guys do it because all the old school guys before them did it. I don't yeah. think it makes a difference. No. It doesn't make any difference for me. I've never put a kink in it and caught more because I had a kink in it. I've never actually seen the bait do anything extra special with a kink in it. So I just read it regular. Um, and it's funny, people get the boat though. You got a kink in it? I'm like, dude, I don't think it's kink. If you're going to put a kink in it, that's kind of how you want it to look. Mm -hmm. If you're going to rig it straight, you just want to kind of come on back through with it and just kind of get that tip poke down. But you're going to rig it just like that. Now, all you're going to do on this deal is you're going to get around the shallow bank, you know, any kind of vegetation. Or even, there's not vegetation, boat docks, um, stumps, that sort of deal. You just want to be up shallow where the fish are actually going to spawn. The fish are or they're going to, yeah, or they're going to be yeah. cruising around. You're going to make a long cast, put your rock tip down, and all I'm going to do. With my spinning rod is I'm gonna twitch, twitch, and make sure I'm popping slack. I don't really want to pull that bait on. Twitch, twitch, and I'm gonna point that rod back, right back at it. So it's twitch, twitch, and point that rod back at it. And all that that worm's gonna do is it's gonna go left, right, and left, and it's gonna take a hard left. And that's that boom, boom, boom. And when you point that rod back, it allows that bait to go to glide, and that's what's gonna cause these reaction strikes most the time. And you cover a little water, you throw it out there and twitch, 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 twitch. Twitch, twitch. It's kind of like a soft plastic derby. Same way a lot of guys fish a fluke, which is another bait that I would say a soft plastic derby is the is 
sort of the same thing. You, you could know? even consider like a Seiko style bait. And Absolutely. Get the same um, and I've been throwing this clout and I really like it. And we do the same thing with this. Yep. We we fish it like a jerk bait. Well, that would be even better for the jerk bait deal because it's so much like it's like thinner yeah. and softer than your normal yeah. stick bait. And it's stick. got a good taper to it. Um, and I think, on my opinion, if I'm deciding whether I want to go with a clout or a fluke, I just it don't matter for me. This is going to sink maybe a little bit faster, but that fluke has a really awesome erratic action. Same deal. You're just gonna you're just trying to you're trying to get some bites from fish that otherwise aren't going to really bite on this deal. And then at times like Mark Daniels, Mark Daniels showed, you kind of get right on this deal. You know, um, you catch a bunch of them. You catch a bunch of them. So that's um, you know that's just one one technique, and I thought that would be a great one to cover. Um, but again, I'm throwing a spinning rod, making a long cast parallel to the bank, down the bank, and just twitching it back. Twitch, twitch, pause, twitch, 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 and just making that, that worm work and glide. You don't really want this worm to fall into the bed. You know, it's, That's not really what it's about. It's about something that's overhead and those fish come up and kind of swirl on it. Um, I will say this, if you put the little kink in the worm, that sucker will dive down a little bit deeper at times. You know, it'll, it'll actually spiral and shoot down a little yeah, bit harder sometimes. There's one other thing that I'll do at times that's, uh, especially if I've got bushes. Now, if I've got bushes and I'm throwing something similar to this or um, like a, a stick bait, I'll take a little Nico weight and put it in the tail. And what that does is when I twitch, twitch, and it comes forward, when I let off that slack, it shoots back like this. And so around grass or bushes or anything like that, if I can you mean like, like a nail weight basically? Like a nail weight, yeah, like a microphone Nico weight or something like that. But if I'm around bushes, I can actually make a good cast and skip it towards those bushes, that bait will slide up into those bushes, yeah. you know? Um, and it adds a little bit more weight in that sort of deal. It's like having a casting chamber on a jerk bait. Exactly. My favorite way to catch bed and fish. Absolute favorite way, what do you think? Take frog. a guess. It's a frog. Yeah, yeah, of course it is. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail because I just got done uh, uh, talking about a frog last two weeks ago. And I appreciate you guys, all the comments, man. Everybody's coming up telling yeah. me thanks for the video. Appreciate you guys watching. Thank you for having me on. I enjoy it, I love it. Absolutely. This is one of my favorite bed fishing baits. Everybody, go to go to the last video uh, from two weeks ago where we shot at yeah. Lake Fort Marina and and watch the frog fishing video. And you'll understand. You twitch it, twitch it, pause it on the bed, and they can't handle it. And yeah, we uh, we did a frog fishing seminar, and then we we had your uh, frog fishing guys network episode yeah. that aired this last week as yeah. well. So there's a lot of lots of comments on that, dude. Lots, lots of, of comments. yeah, lots of recent stuff right. on the frog fishing with Ronnie, and dude, he's the best one I know about it. We talked about that before too, but. Um, now, one of my favorite aspects of the way you frog fish is tell me about your follow up bait when it blows up on the frog. It's a frog. It's a follow up bait when it blows up on the frog. If, if, a, if, a, if a bass, bass blows up, up on the frog. You're not listening to me. When a bass blows up on a frog and misses, what is your follow up bait? It's a frog. What do you, what do you want? What are we, I'm confused. What are you fishing for? <laughs> if he misses the frog, I throw the frog back in there. I'm just, yeah. I'm oh, I got you. I'm telling you. <laughs> Dude, if he misses the frog, he's looking for the frog. Everybody's like, what's your follow up bait? The, the one he's looking well, for. Well, traditionally, people are like, what well, do you, you throw like, a Cinco in there? You flip a little yeah, Texas yeah. rig or whatever. Yeah, no, that's a terrible idea. Uh, that's a terrible idea. That's a terrible idea. <laughs> he just, if I stuck him, maybe, but if he just came up. Look, dude, how many times have something you miss it, you throw in there, and the second it hits the water, she's on it? I'm talking about. She's looking for the bait. We're going, where's the bass? They're going, where's that worm? Yeah, where's that worm? Where that? I believe that. So I think a lot of times when I frog, I can get back in there. It's all accuracy, soft landing, making that sucker twitch, twitch, pause, spit, all that. That's how you get them about the frog. That's my, now I got another bait. This, it's like a frog, but this is it's just a frog a little, for no grass. This is a frog for no grass. Anywhere there's no grass, clear water, something like that, stuffs, docks, something like that. There's nothing around. I just throw a little popper. Um, six cents makes the, the, the splash seven you got. Splash pack 70 is the little one. The little one. The 80 or 90. That's the one I thought was the little one. Um, that big one will almost walk like a spook. It's a totally yeah. different type of bait, but that little one. Yeah. Yeah. That little one's great. You know, and all, I, I, I'm going to fish it. Like yellow Magic. And yellow Magic. Yeah. Any little popping bait, I'm going to fish it the exact same as I fish my frog. I'm not going to slap my wrist because it kind of spits and sputters as it is, but I'm going to make a little bloop, 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 now, bloop. What, tell us about your setup on a pop. So on, on that popper, you know, it's tricky. On those smaller baits, you gotta be careful. You gotta have something that you can make an accurate cast because again, we're shallow, we're 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 target fishing essentially. Yeah, you wanna get it next to like that reed clump or whatever right. it might be spawning. And it, and it has to be subtle, it can't make a big splash, which those small baits don't. But I'm throwing, for me, I'm not very tall, so I'm throwing a six six or like a six eight medium action rod with uh, and I'm throwing monofilament. I don't know a lot of guys like to throw a braid on their top loaders. Man, on these small, yeah. So I'm throwing, I'm throwing 12 pound uh, 
Big game. Burger Big game. That's perfect. Which is the equivalent of 20 We pounds. finally found something we do the same. Because I is, throw a 6 yeah. nine medium, I throw a 12-pound yeah. Burger Big game. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Same deal. and so the rod that I've got right now is a 6 8 uh, Kistler medium. And, and the grip's like not much longer. Short. Than Short hand. So it's a great net. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw you a curveball here real quick. This is old school, but this is so cool. What's the last time you chucked a little prop bait? Devil's horse. It's a devil's horse. Been there, done that. I haven't done this, it. This been a long time. Been a long time. But this is a great little bed fishing bait, and this yeah. is really good, especially around flat areas. Florida, you know, the Florida guys. That's a that's still a thing they do a lot down there in Florida. Is that oh, a floating yeah. devil's horse with a double prop? And yeah. This is this is actually an academy brand. Uh, I've caught hundreds of fish on this bait. It, I, to me, this bait is about the only academy brand bait that I really think. Yeah, I mean, if I'm just being honest, the devil's horse is a big thing, like I said, in Florida, and it used to be a big thing, but, but I think there's a lot of guys that are kind of new to bass fishing or just picked it up in the last 10 years and probably don't even know what the heck a devil's horse no. is. So give us a good, like, break it down. How do you fish your devil's so, horse? A, a devil's horse is essentially a popper that doesn't spit water. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a prop bait. It's a, it's a top water prop bait. Um, and the, so the way I throw, I throw that one on a seven foot medium heavy with a lot of parabolic bend. The rod that I have is actually a light medium heavy. Um, and I throw it on 15 pound big game. Uh, now I'm gonna say this, if I were in Florida or if I were anywhere that has grass, I mean, Fairfield, and I'm throwing that dude out there, I'm gonna throw it on 30, 40 pound break. Yeah. Um, out here I'm throwing it on 15 pound. Uh, big game. The deal is you can get away with the 30 pound braid on a on a, a bigger top one that has a little bit bigger hook. Those exactly. little poppers are almost exactly. a finesse bait. They're yeah. so so and the hooks are so small. And you got to play them out. So and that dude there is unique. So all you're going to do on that is you're going to make small twitches. Just and, that, and, and so. It's like a slush. Yes, it's a slush. It's it's those those blades kind of uh, go opposite of each other and, and they just make a really unique sound. It's just a it's a. It's, I don't even know how to describe it. It's a unique sound that they don't hear, uh, and and so you get you know you're throwing it out there, and your goal is to get it over a bass and twitch it and make her react. Same as the frog, same as the popper. It's the same thing. It's a different sound. Mm -hmm. And this time of year, and so <laughs> I'm chasing squirrel. I'm all about sounds. I know this this time of year it's about sounds <laughs> for me. So on my on my my buzz baits right now, if I'm throwing a buzz bait, I'm throwing two different buzz baits. I've got an old school head clacker. Uh, it's an old strike king. I've had, I've got like six of them. I've had them for 20 years. Um, and then I've got a, uh, uh, a six cents with the clacker. And the clacker is unbelievable because it makes such you a mean, a uh, What did I say? Six cents. Santone. Six I've got a cents and nothing else. Um, and Santone yeah. makes a great buzz bait. Yeah, a great buzz, buzz bait. That one with the clacker is as good as it gets. And I don't throw the brake one. I know a lot of people throw brake one. I don't throw the brake one. But it's a unique sound. It's a loud, irritating sound. The headbanger is the same way. It's so loud and obnoxious and irritating. And similar to the metallic worm, all you're doing is causing a reaction. You know, yeah. it's like like a, a fly that's buzzing around and you slap at it. It's the same. Well, thing. I mean, let's talk talk about that because the deal is you got these bass in there to spawn, and yeah. they're not in there to feed. Right. They're in there to protect, defend, and they are apex predators. They don't like anything that's especially a bigger bass. She don't want to eat. Like you might see some brim run up on a bass with a two or three pound male on. It. You will never ever see a brim run up on a bass with an eight pound female. Mm -hmm. in They'll be, they don't let nothing get around them. Right. They don't want nothing around them. They want to be on the bed with whatever their male bass, and that's it. They want, and they don't let. So anything that's like obnoxious, making noise, uh, your frog is going, and it yeah. stays on top of their head, and this thing making all that noise, it makes these fish that really that eight pounder is not going to eat anything while she's up there on the bed. She's not right. going to bite, digest, eat anything while she's up there on that bed most of the time. So you take a fish that really has no reason to bite stop eating and making it by out of territorial defense and reaction and that's absolutely why the noise comes into place yeah and that's it and that's you're exactly right and that's a sudden movement you like on the trip run it's just such a sudden darting right. movement and it's such a bright obnoxious color you know and so the popper is a really good bait to catch feeding bass with i mean it's when they're when they're feeding that's a great bait one of my favorite deals is during bed fishing season is you know especially like we, we was fishing a little later and they started late in the morning but typically we start real early in the morning this time of year and I love to like see some bed fish the day before that we didn't Oh yeah. yeah. Like maybe we saw a big one that wasn't quite ready but was around the bed and I'll mark where that bed is in my mind and the first thing in the morning during the low conditions I'll go put that popper on that bed and fish it real slow Absolutely. and slow and I've caught so many yeah. like I've had so many guy trips start off on the perfect foot because 
there's an eight or nine pounder laying on this bed. I know it's around that bed. We go over and just keep throwing that pop up that bed four or five times and all of a sudden, shoot. Yeah. And it's just like a little kiss. They don't even really yeah. blow up on a bed. And it's great, you know, it'll catch it's a great, great bed cruising bait. fish and that's real. A palmer's a great bed fishing bait in low light conditions. Yeah, you know, in, in talking about the, the devil's horse, uh, it's 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 a great it's a great bait to get those fish that are actually on beds. The popper is just a versatile bait. This isn't something I honestly, man, I don't throw this thing any other time of the year. I only throw it. It's it. And when they start buying that, I'll start throwing this. You know, when I kind of get away with it. Now, let's talk about one other bait. Man, there's a million things I can talk about. I mean, you, you could catch a spawning bass or a bedding bass in a million different ways. Um, a swim bait's one of my favorites. So I went to another lake in East Texas with a swim bait, and before my customers even got there, I caught like two eights. Um, and basically all I did is I got on a big flat full of beds, and I could see the beds pretty well. And I was throwing big soft plastic swim baits, yeah. similar to this uh, Smash Tech Convict. And right. so um, this white one's a great bait. I don't always throw one. I actually throw bluegill on the beds more than any other color. Yeah. Early in the year, the white's really good. Yeah. So like early, like in March. And yeah. You know, it's still well, really I, I think it's so, you know. We throw white on a lot of stuff. The white spinnerbait yeah. works well in Mar early yeah. March. A white chatterbait, a white frog. Like we throw white on a lot of stuff this time. And you know, the, the bluegill for me is exactly what you just said. That eight pounder, she ain't putting no wood. She ain't and bro, she can see this thing coming. She turns around and sees this big bluegill and sits still and assumes. She's, and she kind of turns and does it. Yeah. And she's assuming that bluegill can't see her because she's, she's camouflaged. Yeah. She, she's green. She's next to that grass or stuff or whatever. And this big thing comes by and they turn and they let it get right behind them and then they just go with them. And they grab. And um, I had a day two years ago where I was throwing the small version of the poacher three years ago, two years ago. And I had like six, seven fish over eight pounds. Do you remember this? Mm -hmm. I was actually going to frog fish and stumbled upon that bite. It might have been 2017. Yeah. Anyways, this is a great bait, and this is a great bait. This new Divine Swim Bait, the big one, I think this is a great bed fishing bait. Uh, and I think it's it's really versatile. I think it's, you just swim through this through a bed, they're going to buy it most of the time. If she's on there, and she's ready to go, and she can't see you, you know, that's the difference we're talking about. She can see you unless you're sometimes, far enough. Back. Sometimes. She don't, they don't see We're going to talk about that in a minute. There's a way to do it where they don't see you. Um, and so I'll rig this with this. I rig this two different ways. I'll throw it on like a flashy hook a lot, but I'll also throw it on just a, uh, a small four rod uh, weighted hook with an eight ounce weight. Mm -hmm. And I can actually put my rod up and fish it more like a weight bait. And man, that'll, a lot of times I can weight that over them and it'll get a reaction by it. You know, this is a new bait. This Devon Swim Bait's a new bait on the market this year. And I mean, I don't know how many people that are watching this do or don't know about it, but that Devon Swim Bait is real special. It's like, it's awesome. It's you know? a very good swim bait and it's extremely durable. Like you can literally sometimes catch 20 plus fish on one side. Oh, bait. we did it. We did it, Chuck. We yeah, got a lot. Know, it's on like, they bite it. It's got a great action. It looks good to your eye and then the fish just choking. I mean, it's a really good swim bait. Yeah. So, you know, I think it's important because um, it, it's unique. So you got your kite tech, which I call a true run, which the head doesn't move, the tail moves. Right? Then you got your skinny dipper or your hollow bodies, which are wobble baits. The body moves, the whole, the head head the whole thing shakes. And this one's kind of a hybrid. You know, it's, it, 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 it's kind of a hybrid. You know, it does a little bit of both. Um, but, you know, I don't, I don't want to get off and around on this. It's just the soft plastic swim baits, man. You can throw them anywhere. You know, especially the smash that came out. They're yeah. great for guys, and I know that. They're great for guys. Because you can throw them anywhere yeah. and just point out them real. Right. And, and <laughs> dude, I mean, you, you might catch a two pounder and you might catch a 12 pounder. He yeah. Taylor just got a 10 pounder a couple weeks ago, like right a few days before the MLF tournament started. He got a 10 pounder on, on the awesome. But that's how I like to catch them. You know, that's one of man. I, I've got a lot of other ways to catch them. But those are those are the basics for what I'm going to do. You know, the soft plastic jerk baits, the trick worm, um, the top water baits, the frog, the swim baits, and then the buzz bait. I, right now I'm throwing buzz bait about half the day. I ain't catching but about two or three of them, but I can't help it because I like to watch them bite. Yeah. But, you know, and I do it, obviously, you know, I, I look at them a lot. I look yeah, at them a lot. Um, you do? And I've had really good success looking at them. You know, I think I've kind of maybe started to get a little bit of a reputation of being a, a side fisherman, mm -hmm. you know, like a guy that people know around here for side fishing because it's not for everybody. I, I, I'm well aware of that. There's some people that do it on the